Hello and a very warm welcome to another quick tip video. This time I'm going to give you a rundown for all the settings you have to do to get a complete OpenColor.io ACES workflow within Octane for Cinema 4D and After Effects. This video is piggybacking off a lot of other videos that already have been made, but I tried to compress everything knowledgeable about it in there, so you just have to watch this one video to get your ACES workflow started. Speaking of start, let's get started. So first of all, you have to Google ACES 1.2 and you will find a GitHub link here where you can download your ACES files. Those are important as you need to connect them within Octane and After Effects. So once you've downloaded them, just unpack them and store them somewhere on your hard drive, ready to be linked later on. So to get your ACES going inside of Octane, go to Settings, Color Management and link your ACES 1.2 file config OpenColor.io in here. If it's not already ticked, tick Automatic. This will make Octane configure your ACES workflow for you, so you don't make any errors. Last but not least, let's go to the Camera Imager tab and there to open Color.io. Usually there are two choices you have to make. Either you go with the sRGB workflow or with the Rec. 709 workflow. sRGB and Rec. 709 have the same color primaries, they just have a little different tone mapping. So let's show you by clicking on sRGB. If you don't see a difference, you have to choose your open color AO workflow here. Usually this is set up to HDR sRGB and looks like this. This is the normal output you get from your Octane. By setting it to OpenColor.io, you get whatever output you choose here. I noticed that sRGB looks very contrasty most of the time and I like the midtones and dark tones of my image to be a bit lighter. So what I do is go to Rec. 709. This gives you the same goodness treatment as sRGB, but leaves the midtones and shadows a bit lighter. And this is to my preference. But since most of the workflows dealing with sRGB, let's set this back to sRGB. What you probably also have noticed is that the picture has gotten a bit darker overall. So to compensate that, I usually go to the camera imager and set the exposure to 1.5 to compensate for that. And as easy as that, congratulations, you have now set up your ACES workflow inside of Octane. One thing to note for your input textures that you use in your materials as well as your HDRI. Those should be left as sRGB. Don't pre-convert your input textures as Octane expects sRGB textures to go in there and those will be converted internally. There will be other workflows in later Octane versions, but for now just don't pre-convert your textures. Now that we've dealt with the Octane internal settings, let's go to the output. Open up the render settings, choose Octane as a renderer and go to the settings here. Usually this is set as sRGB. But we want to keep the ACES workflow intact to carry over to our compositing package. So to do that, let's choose here ACES CG. This is the recommended workflow for CG work. From here you have the choice to either output in the Cinema 4D output or you can output inside of Octane's output. I prefer this method as this method gives you the default Octane output, where else the Cinema 4D output also uses the Cinema 4D compression etc. Again a word of caution, you need to use a floating point image format to output your ACES files. ACES needs this for its wide color gamut and its wide dynamic range to be tone mapped down later to sRGB pictures. If you don't use a floating point image format, as for example PNG, you get artifacts and the ACES workflow is broken in between the handshake of your 3D application and your compositor. 
The usual go-to format is the OpenEXR standard file, which is already selected here. So let's go from the top. First, of course, you have to enable your output passes. Then you have to set up file path. Here I used render tokens to use that to output my files relative to the Cinema 4D file. Then you choose your file type, make sure that it's set to EXR Octane, as this gives you the native Octane output. Next, the depth. The depth can be set to 32-bit or to 16-bit. If you don't have crazy high white values in your scene, 16-bit will do. The compression is also a really important thing. Usually it goes from the largest file size to the smallest file size in this list. I always choose DWAB compression. This compression is lossy, but I never noticed any artifacts in there. So I would consider it good to use. You want to save your beauty file in here, because you of course want to save your beauty file. And last but not least, this is a thing I always tick off because I don't like multi-layered XR files. I want my layers to be separate files. I choose to tick off multi-layer file. And now with all of that said, we can render out our file. As you render out your file, notice that in the picture viewer, the output is looking very different from your initial render in your live viewer. Notice that the rubber band here is rather yellow than orange, and also the red looks ble bleached out. This is because Cinema 4D's native picture viewer doesn't understand OpenColorIO and doesn't apply any profile to the output pixels that is fed by Octane. So don't be alarmed if you see your colors not matching in the output file, because this will be corrected in comp later. Before you start After Effects, you have to load the OpenColorIO plugin for it. So search for OpenColorIO for After Effects, you get to the site, download the plugin, install it into After Effects, and then you open After Effects. In After Effects, let's just check if everything's set up correctly. You have to have a 32-bit depth per channel, then your working space should be in sRGB and linearized. If that's all set, let's bring in our render. This is the XR we just um, rendered. And uh, let's make a comp. And you can see that it's just the same washed out colors that our Cinema 4D picture viewer has showed us. And this is exactly the same reason. After Effects also doesn't know about ACES and shows us the sRGB color space. And this is the wrong space for now. So let's fix this. I usually do this workflow by bringing in a adjustment layer and do my ACES conversion in here. Here we go, make it ACES, then go up here and call for open color IO. And this plugin, bring that down to the ACES workflow. Now you have to do the same as in Octane by linking the config open color IO file in here. And as you might guess, the input profile is ACCG, the output profile is either um, sRGB or Rec. 709, depending on what you've used in Cinema 4D. You can interchange those, even if you use the other one in Cinema 4D. As the input file is ACCG, you don't have mixed up anything. If you like the Rec. 709 better, then just use the Rec. 709. If you like the sRGB better, then just use the sRGB. Now you can see that this image got even worse and more washed out. This is because of After Effects linear workflow right now. The OpenColorIO doesn't know it's working inside of a linear workflow and gives out a gamma sRGB image inside of a linear workflow, which then in turn After Effects doesn't know anything about and applies a viewing LUT gamma of sRGB again. So we have a double gamma. To counter that, we just need to get rid of the gamma on the image. This can be done with the color profile converter. So I'm just typing in profile. 
and dragging the row file in here. So what you want to do here is going from an sRGB to an sRGB color space, but then linearize the second one. And voila, you have the same output as you had with your Cinema 4D Octane Live Viewer. Now in terms of color grading and effects, I usually do that in between the image and the ACES. So I'm just going to reuse that layer here by making it another adjustment layer. And you, if you use that, uh, for example, with an exposure, you can get it to be lit up. I'm just using a very high value Y2. You can see that the fall off and the image is still there. It looks like a high key render now. So if you would to put this layer above the ACES layer, then the tone mapping of ACES comes first and then the exposure comes and you can see the very harsh lighting that is not very natural and looks sort of burned out. So I'm going to put this layer back here. Of course, this um, exposure was for demonstration purposes, but you could play around and get a nice looking image out of there. And that's about it. That's the ACES workflow inside of Octane in Cinema 4D and After Effects. If you have any more questions, you of course are free to write them in the comments below. I hope this gave you a good overview over the topic. It's not explained in detail, but at least it shows you the whole setting up process to get a nice workflow with ACES inside of Octane and After Effects. And last but not least, all that remains for me to do is wish you a great time, having fun and good rendering.